since the global financial crisis, uh, if we had to ask our, our clients, we had to ask general commentators in the market, what sector has delivered the highest earnings growth in South Africa over the last five years, since 2007? And generally people respond and say industrials, because that's where the price action's been, in term, and especially large cap industrials, where the price action's been in the marketplace. In fact, the answer is resources. So resources have been the best performing sector in terms of earnings, followed by industrials and then followed by financials. But interesting enough, what sector has been the worst performing sector? And that, are, that is resources. Uh, in 2007, 2008, commodity stocks made up more than half our index in South Africa. Anglos and Billiton alone made up 30, 32% up and, and higher of uh, uh, the all share index. Uh, right now, resources only make up 31%, just over 30% of the index. So despite phenomenal earnings growth, they've been decimated. And we think this creates an opportunity for investors. If we look at our cyclically adjusted PEs, which are, we call our CAPE ratios, so that's a through the cycle PE number. So we take the last seven years of earnings, we normalize it, we take out uh, inflation and we average it. We get what we think is a far better representation of value than the one year trailing PE, which can be influenced by both a variable price, but last year's trading environment for a business. So the CAPE ratio we think is the DNA valuation of a business, not just the one year driver. And on CAPE ratios, resources are now looking incredibly expensive. Um, now, you might say, well, hang on, their prospects are quite poor. But over time, the single biggest determinant of your investment return, as you will now know, I often say, is the price you pay for an investment. So going into 2007, the CAPE ratios on commodity stocks were close to 30, okay, massively high. And right now, they're about 10, very attractive. And it's a very good forecasting tool of future returns. And the reason why it's a good forecasting tool is it actually doesn't require us to think about any future variables. It looks just at historic information. And the relationship between cap ratios and subsequent returns are very good. Why this is particularly important in commodity stocks is that uh, people, when they look at commodity stocks, or the, the results of commodity stocks are often determined by RAND and, and commodity prices, which are very hard to forecast. But here you've got a tool it's using backward information that has a lot of information content about uh, prospective returns. Of interest in terms of cap ratios, the most expensive sector in the market on a cap ratio of 22 are your industrial stocks. So industrials are, to our mind, very expensive, especially large cap industrials. Commodity stocks are very attractive, um, sitting on, a, as I said, on a cap ratio of 10. Now, prospects might look, um, people will say, well, are looking dim for uh, resource shares. Um, again, the market has been schizophrenic in this because how can you say that uh, the, the large cap industrial stocks, such as our cash retailers, such as NASPAS, which is obviously a China play, such as SAB, which is a beer sales into emerging market. Uh, so the market's saying these shares are expensive because prospects are good and economic prospects for these businesses are looking attractive uh, for the markets that they play in, yet prospects for commodity stocks are poor and therefore they deserve a derating. There's a disconnect, because if China's going to grow, then NASPAS and the China story works well, and they'll consume commodity stocks. And if China's not going to grow, then NASPAS is very expensive, and your commodity stocks are correctly priced. So there's a disconnect here.